part one, we took a brief look at the history of this rare little JDM beast that I waited 27 years for, the AutoZam AZ-1. Then I showed you my very own example, all cleaned up and ready for the road. Weird, right? I mean, all these years I've been showing you the work that went into a car first, and then after a handful of videos, showing you the end result after it was all finished. This time I did it the other way around, mainly because this car was already in great condition and really didn't need much. The various jobs and modifications were more about me working my way through the car, learning about how it works, and personalizing it to my tastes a bit. So let's get to work. First up was a complete detail job inside and out. Unlike the cars that I've given a mini restoration to in the past, like my Galant VR4 and Nissan Figaro, the AZ-1 only needed a good, thorough wash, clay bar, and waxing. During the wash, I discovered that the AZ-1 is one of those cars that hides water in all sorts of little nooks and crannies. For hard to dry cars, motorcycles, or anything really, I like a mini handheld blower like this one. I picked this one up on Amazon for $20 and it works great. So now that the paint is shining, it's time to dig a little deeper. But before going any further, I need the right tools. Since this car is basically held together with hundreds of Phillips screws, I need a proper screwdriver set. If you have a Japanese car or motorcycle that you love, you need a set of JIS compliant screwdrivers. These screwdrivers are made by Vessel, the company that developed the JIS standard. Note the differences between the JIS and a regular Phillips. The JIS is designed to grip the screw and not cam out like a Phillips does. To get my hands on these, I went to one of my all-time favorite websites to visit and shop, RevLimiter.net. Adam runs this website from a real car enthusiast perspective and offers a wide variety of truly unique, custom products. There's so much to see and drool over here, but what I love most are the Miata gauge faces. The designs are stunning and the selections are plentiful. From classic to modern to race inspired and of course, Doug. So a few days after placing my order, my screwdrivers arrived. Here's another reason why RevLimiter.net is unlike any other online shop. It would be so easy to just chuck these in an envelope and call it a day, but Adam takes it to another level. In addition to his handwritten note and my screwdriver set, there was also this mystery bag. Hmm. Wrapped inside were a couple of tasty Japanese haichu fruit candies, an assortment of great looking stickers and cards, and best of all, a 1985 Honda City Turbo 2. The City is one of my favorite cars and opening this surprise package was such a treat. I gotta keep this one away from the kids or it'll end up like my poor R35 GTR here. I chose the Miata Repair Kit set, which is a good all-around screwdriver assortment for the jobs we'll be doing on the AZ-1. They'll also be great for any Japanese cars we work on in the future, too. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay, so I'm down here detailing out this front trunk area. This really isn't a functional trunk. It's more of like where the AC condenser, the radiator, the brake parts, AC parts, uh, and the headlights live. There is a cover that goes all over this that you'll see, and um, it kind of looks like the spare tire could go up here, but there's not a place to mount it. It actually mounts behind the uh, driver's seat. So um, this area has just kind of gotten dusty and grimy over the years, and uh, as I'm going through it, it's kind of like detailing under the hood of a normal car. I mean, you have all the steering components and stuff, AC lines and things you have to work around. So you've seen me do this before. I'm not gonna show you every single step, but I am using my trusty scrub bubs here, which are just working so great. It's just eating this grime right away and it's leaving a nice finish behind. Um, so I'm just gonna get to it with my toothbrush and my scrub bubs and I'll show you how it all turns out. To really deep clean this area, I removed the metal radiator cover, the jack and related tools, the washer fluid reservoir, and finally the headlight assemblies. As always, I made sure to label everything I removed or unplugged with my favorite highly visible tape and a Sharpie. To do this cleanup job, I used a toothbrush, a bunch of rags, scrubbing bubbles, Meguiar's Ultimate Compound, and Mother's Back to Black.
I have removed some things, but I don't want to disturb too much under here, so I'm doing a lot of working around things. As you can imagine, parts don't grow on trees for these things, so I'm just being very careful and uh, not removing as much as I probably normally would. Now I don't believe the fine folks at AutoZam intended for this area to get like doused with water. So uh, as much as it would be nice to just spray all this down with a pressure washer or a hose and warm water, I'm just uh, letting the scrub bugs do their thing and then I come in here with a sock and uh, just sort of wipe down everything I did. And if you do a couple areas here, it doesn't take long for the sock to get completely filthy. So you're gonna be using a lot of old socks. Oh, and I got a new work light for Christmas. Check this thing out. Boom! It is so bright. All right, it's already looking pretty great under here. I still have to remove this, uh, the wiper arm, and I'd like to either paint that or clean it up. All this plastic cover here, remove all of this and clean it up. I think we can get that looking brand new uh, without painting or anything. And uh, we'll be getting pretty close here. I think part of the fun of doing a project like this where you just go through and detail every nook and cranny is you're also learning about the car. So, you know, especially a car like this uh, that you've never had any experience with or have never seen in person until now, it just helps you learn everything and uh, get familiar with it. The next job is to clean up this metal radiator cover since it's a big focal point. The paint is overall in good shape, but a quick polish will make a big difference. For this, I used my mother's power cone polishing tool and Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. Much better. The power cone was great at polishing all the contours and the ultimate compound really brought out the shine. All right, let's put it back in. Next up were the headlights. I polished the glass lenses, painted the metal attachment points and polished the rest of the housing too. Now they're ready to go back in place. After that, I cleaned the plastic headlight trim, which had gotten chalky over the years. After a good cleaning and a few rounds of back to black, they looked like brand new. The final job under here was to remove the cowl plastics and give them a thorough cleaning and screw them back in place. Here's how that all turned out. So with the front trunk area looking awesome, it was time to try something new and exciting that I'd never done before. Was it hot yoga? Dude, I bet it was hot yoga. No, no, it wasn't hot yoga. It was ordering parts from Japan. Why would it be hot yoga? Anyway, with my Figaro, even though it's a Japan only model, Parts are rather easy to get because of the following the Figaro has in England. They love them. So if you need something, you just pick up the phone and call a couple of blokes across the pond, and you're set. Acquiring AZ-1 goodies requires far more testicular fortitude. You know, with the language barrier, 13-hour time difference, eye-watering shipping rates, and pancreas-twisting dollar-to-yen exchange rate and all. It makes a trip to AutoZone for a set of brake pads for your F-150 seem as involuntary as breathing air in and out. 
but after some research, I found that it isn't too bad, you just gotta want it. So I've designed this simple JDM part acquisition flowchart. Okay, so you start by hopping onto Yahoo Auctions Japan. Oh yeah, the website's in Japanese. Did I mention that? Do you have a Japanese translator on hot standby? No? Okay, open this website up in Chrome and let Google Translate do magic. Suddenly, a high-performance muffler becomes Auto Jewel Wind God Muffler. Oh boy, we need to get Elon Musk on this pronto. Anywho, the technology isn't perfect. Don't worry, you'll get used to it. All right, you found the JDM doodad that you want. Do you have a buddy in Japan? No? Well, don't even dream about attempting to bid on this doodad, you filthy animal. Instead, you need to work with an intermediary who bids and or purchases on your behalf, accepts the item in Japan, and then repackages it and ships it to you in whatever non-Japan place you live in. This all sounded pretty wild at first, but after working with Jesse at the Streeter Corporation, it was easy. Too easy, actually, and it doesn't help that there is pretty much an endless stream of rare, wonderful, and fantastical parts and aftermarket goodies just waiting over there for you. Proceed with extreme caution. This could be highly addictive. So given the depth and breadth of what I just illustrated, I'm sure you can understand why I started small. Okay, let's open it up. Oh, look at this, it's so perfect. Surprise, it's a genuine AutoZam replacement emblem for the hood. Installation is pretty easy. You just get some thin fishing line, saw through the old adhesive, and pull the emblem off. I used Goo Gone and a plastic razor blade to get rid of this residue. A little light buffing completely removed this dirt outline that formed around the old emblem. Here's a look at the old versus new emblem. The old one wasn't too bad, but it was starting to show its age. Installing it was a quick peel and stick process that required a steady hand. Oh yeah, much better. Speaking of parts and other goodies, some things are a little easier to come by. Like my real K-Car license plates that I found on regular boring old eBay, even though the seller was located in Japan. Boy, that was easy. Took a while to get here, but the wait was totally worth it. When I picked up my AZ-1, it had these aftermarket wheels on it that the original owner installed in Japan. I actually liked them, but they were 10 footers. As you got closer, they were missing the center caps, had lots of scratches and other blemishes, and had so many dang lug holes. So they clearly fit the AZ-1's 4 and 114.3 pattern, and I'm guessing they could fit everything from this, to this, and probably even this. So off they go. Remember when I told you about buying Japanese parts and how addictive that can be? Well, with just a few clicks and an email or two to the Streeter Corporation, I was the proud new owner of a pair of cardboard tubes expertly wrapped in a sheath of real JDM cardboard. Inside were these, a set of rare OEM Mazda Speed AZ-1 wheels. They're made by Anki and are 13 by five with a plus 45 millimeter offset. They're also really light, coming in around eight and a half pounds. Now I suppose I could have bolted these on as is, but as you can see, they needed a little love. So I cleaned them up good and sprayed on some silver Duplicolor high performance wheel coating. In between coats, I decided to work on the rear of the car a bit. First, I removed the bumper cover to get at the metal panel behind it. 
The paint on this panel was faded and you could really see that through the cooling slats on the bumper cover. Cleaning this and coating it in low gloss black made a huge difference and now the panel disappears from sight. While I was back there, I also brought back the shine on this exhaust tip and worked on cleaning the surrounding plastic panels down under. Next up is a big focal point of the rear, this really cool AutoZam stamped exhaust heat shield. I'm so glad this was still intact and in good condition. It just needed cleaned and sprayed with more low gloss black high heat enamel. I like it. One more little task here before the bumper cover goes back on. Some plastic polish on these number plate lights make them look like new again. All right, on with the bumper. Something I didn't get on camera was cleaning and or painting all the hardware, like these bumper screws, which only makes sense while you have everything apart. So here's how all of our hard work at the rear of the car turned out. All of these little jobs add up to a big improvement. Up next is an engine bay detail. For this job, I used the cleaners and tools that you see here, and my favorite new thing, my snap-on work light. As with the items under the front hood, I tried to disturb as few things as possible under here, only unbolting various brackets so I could clean around and behind them. The engine bay was already in good shape, so this wasn't a bad job at all, especially compared to others I've done in the past. So here's how that all turned out. Okay, back to the wheels. I'd originally hoped to reuse the Firestone FR10s, but upon closer inspection, one of the tires had been plugged and they were showing some early signs of dry rot. So another lesson I've learned is 13 inch tires don't grow on trees around here. Yes, I called Tire Rack, Discount Tire, Tire World, Tire King, World Tire, King Tire Direct, and Rack's Tire Discount King World, and they all said the same thing. Can't help you, buddy. Bye. But I didn't let all that slow me down. These wheels traveled too far to be stopped now. So here they are with their fresh paint and new tires. These turned out so much better than I expected. So it took some creative internetting, but I found some tires in the factory size. I picked up these Nexon Enpriz, Enpriz, Enprise? What is this name? I have no clue how to say this. They need a vowel or two in there or something. Jeez. So I got these all-season tires. Not my ultimate choice, but after driving on them, they perform much better than I expected. You can't bolt on new wheels using rusty old lug nuts, so I ordered a set of these from Douglas Wheel. These were the only ones around that I could find in the tiny 10mm by 1.25 size with the proper conical seat that didn't stick out 3 feet like these. Yes, you have to use UTV lug nuts. Okay, side-by-side -side owners. Please tell me, is this cool? There sure are lots of them for sale on various websites. All right, let's bolt them on. Oh yeah, that is exactly the look I'm going for. It took some effort to make this setup come together, but it was all worth it to get that factory fit, look, and performance that I wanted. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more fun videos about this car. We'll finish up our fixes and upgrades, we'll take it through the twisty mountain roads, we'll do some performance tests, and much more. Also, please visit me on Facebook and Instagram, I'd love to hear from you over there. So with that said, thanks again folks, we'll see you next time.